Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Lin from the Department of Infectious Diseases. I am going to be presenting the first lecture series of travel immunization. I have no conflict of interest for today's CME lecture. I was asked to present the following travel vaccines, hepatitis A, B, polio, rabies, meningococcal meningitis, brefna 20, and vaccine hesitancy. Our agenda today is packed, so please sit tight, see belt, and enjoy the talk. I took this picture in Mazatlan, Mexico several years ago. Traveling could be just like this famous cliff diver. If we plan it right, traveling could be enjoyable, inspirational, and give you creativity in both physical and mental health. If we don't plan it right, the whole trip could be ruined. I'm going to be starting with Hepatitis A, one of the most common vaccine preventable infections acquired during travel. Morbidity increases with age and pre-existing chronic hepatitis, even though this can give you only mild infection. Risk is declining in some areas, but still outbreaks are still occurring, even in less endemic areas, such as United States and Western Europe. When you look at the map, the countries and areas at risk are in orange, which is pretty much everywhere in the world except America, Canada, North Pole, Western Europe, and Australia. International travelers are definitely at risk, especially those with high-risk itineraries such as traveling to rural areas in high-risk regions such as Central and South America, Africa, and Asia. In addition to international travelers, men who have sex with men, homelessness, HIV infection, and substance abuses are also at risk. Transmission is through oral fecal route, through contaminated food and water, and oral or anal sex. Prevention. We cannot underestimate the importance of food and water precautions. Personal hygiene and sanitation. Different vaccines are available in the world. They all are highly efficacious and well tolerated, and they can give you long-term protection. We can provide two doses series for international travelers on day zero and between six and 12 months. We can consider serologic screening they may have had natural immunity through infection so that we don't have to provide unnecessary hepatitis A vaccination. For international travelers, those aged above six months and older, traveling to or walking in countries with high or intermediate intimacy of hepatitis A infection. For those age less than six months or someone who has contraindication for a vaccine, we can provide immunoglobulin if we have to. Hopefully, we don't have to do all the time. For age between six to 11 months, one dose of hepatitis A vaccine could be offered, but this dose will not be counted toward routine two-dose vaccine series at the later age of their life. For age above 12 months, vaccine can be considered for travelers, regardless of their destination. For age above 18 years old, we can offer combined Hep A and Hep B vaccines, which is available even accelerated schedules that I will be presenting in later slide. Vaccine 
efficacy is very good, highly immunogenic. More than 97% of the children and adolescents will be seropositive within a month of the first dose. More than 95% of the adults develop protective antibody within four weeks of a single dose, meaning even one dose before they travel to endemic countries, they will be beneficial. This picture was taken in Glacier National Park, Montana. Very pleasant and you should visit when you have a chance. With this, we could be shifting gear to Hepatitis B. Hippocrates described epidemic jaundice in 5th century BCE. More than 2 billion people worldwide have been infected. More than 240 million people have chronic and lifelong infections. Hepatitis B infection is the major cause of acute and chronic hepatitis and cirrhosis and is the cause of up to 80% of hepatocellular carcinoma. Therefore, I cannot stress enough the importance of hepatitis B vaccination. High-risk country and areas are in orange, which is pretty much everywhere except America, Canada, Western Europe, and Australia. Moral transmission is through contaminated blood, blood products, and body fluids. Through sexual contact, needle sticks injury, tattooing, acupuncture, and ear piercing. Also, IV drug use, unsafe injections, dental work, contaminated needles, razors, toothbrushes, and for babies during the perinatal period. Hepatitis B can be highly infectious. Someone with acute Hep B infection can have surface antigen in the blood one or two months before and after onset of the symptoms and give you infection. Someone with chronic infections can be infectious throughout their life as long as they have hepatitis B surface antigen in the blood, meaning your friends, somebody in the community can be completely asymptomatic and give you the infection at the time of the exposure. Therefore, it is extremely important to get vaccination before you travel to these high-risk or intermediate risk countries or areas. For hepatitis B vaccine, recombinant vaccine was approved in United States in 1986, which is plasma-derived vaccine and three doses series on day zero, one, and six months. Other several alternative schedule may be available in different countries, but not in the United States. The immunogenicity for these vaccines are very good. After one dose, you can get immunity 30 to 55%. After two doses, you can get immunity more than 75%. After three doses, immunity jump up to more than 90%. For someone who doesn't have both immunity for hepatitis A and B can be offered combined hepatitis A and B vaccine. This is a three doses series on given on days zero, one, and six months. Let's say if a traveler is leaving the country within three weeks. You can accelerate combined HAP A and HAP B vaccine on day zero, seven, and 21 day and boost the traveler's immunity to more than 90%. And when he come back from the trip, he need to get another booster dose 12 months later. This vaccine is licensed for age above 18. 
other countries may have junior version of combined vaccine, but not available in United States. Zero protection is very good and comparable to monovalent vaccines. If someone is late with the vaccine, you never need to restart the whole series. Just give the next dose and resume the schedule. This picture was taken in Papeti Tahiti, French Polynesia, a few months ago. With this, we are going to segue to bolio myelitis vaccine. There are three wine type for bolio virus, one, two, and three. As of now, only wine type number one remains endemic. Only five cases were reported in 2021, four in Afghanistan and one in Pakistan. One case was reported early in 2022 in Pakistan, which is a significant improvement from 140 cases in these countries in 2020. I'm sure COVID-19 pandemic negatively impacted the global polio eradication program and outbreak control efforts. Therefore, we need to monitor closely this situation. Motor transmission is through fecal oral route and oral oral route. Again, I cannot stress enough importance of food and water hygiene. Virus shedding could be seen in pharyngeal secretions for one or two weeks and in feces for three to six weeks. Therefore, even though somebody around you may be completely asymptomatic, but can still give you infection if we don't wash our hands thoroughly or we don't take care of our food sanitation. Vaccine drive polio virus infection can be seen in developing countries if they are using oral live polio virus vaccines. In any case, risk is very low for travelers, even they are going to affected country regardless of their vaccination status. For prevention, I cannot underscore enough the importance of food, water, and personal hygiene. For vaccination, we can offer one-time booster dose of inactivated polio vaccine before traveling for travelers when they travel to the countries and they may have increased risk of exposure to polio virus. Inactivated polio virus vaccine is routinely given at age 2, 4, and between 6 and 18 months, then boosted again at the age around 5. The United States doesn't use live oral polio virus anymore. However, you may see these vaccines in some developing countries. Polio vaccine is very effective highly effective in producing immunity to polio virus. After two doses, you may have immunity more than 90%, and after three doses, you may have immunity more than 99%. Durational immunity is probably lifelong, even though we cannot be certain. Again, this picture was taken in Glacier National Park, Montana. With this, we're going to be moving to another vaccine preventable infection, meningococcal meningitis. Nyseria meningitis, six major serogroups, A, B, C, W, X, and Y, are associated with epidemic. The main source of infection are usually healthy adults, carrying virulent strains. 
This is the famous African meningitis belt. This extended meningitis belt of sub-Saharan Africa stretching from Senegal in the west to the Ethiopia in the east, total of 26 countries, has the highest rates of the disease. Even though the highest incidence is reported in African meningitis belt countries, the cases has been reported worldwide. The cases are predominantly in dry season in Africa. If you go to Saudi Arabia, you are required to vaccinate for Hajj and Amraj. If you are in the crowded situation, such as student dormitory and military, you will be at high risk and you should be vaccinated. You can get bacteria through direct contact with airborne droplets from infected persons or from carriers, or sometimes from the objects that are freshly swined by infected person or carriers. When you get infection, bacteria attach to your nasal pharynx and oropharynx, then they multiply. Less than 1%, the bacteria go into your bloodstream and give you systemic infection and meningitis. Non-vaccine prevention method is extremely important. Cover your cough, cover your sneeze, good respiratory hygiene is extremely important. Frequent and thorough hand hygiene is also very, very important. Two main different types of vaccines are available. Polysaccharide vaccines and conjugated vaccine, which is a preferred vaccine in the United States. And then you have different valent, bivalent, trivalent, monovalent, quadrivalent. Conjugated quadrivalent vaccine is a preferred vaccine for most international travelers. Zero group B medical gawker vaccines. This zero group has been associated with U.S. college campus outbreaks. This is available in New Zealand, U.S., U.K., and some European countries. We don't recommend routine vaccination for travelers for MEMB vaccine, but we can consider for students studying abroad and semester at C programs. This picture was taken during the pandemic in Blue Ridge Parkway, North Carolina. With this, we are moving to rabies vaccine. This is the neurotrophic virus, and that can cause an acute and fatal progressive encephalitis. In this map, in the dark blue areas, it is the endemic dark transmitted human rabies cases has been reported. In the light blue area, this is the endemic dark rabies cases has been reported. However, there's no transmission from dog to human. In the dark orange area, there are sporadic dog transmitted rabies and also sporadic human cases. In the light yellow area, they are dark rabies, but they are well controlled and there is no transmission to the human. In the green area, there is no dark rabies, zero dark rabies, and there is no dark transmitted human rabies cases. Transmission. A bite, scratch, lick from the dog of other mammal in rabies endemic country are at risk. All a bite, scratch from a bed anywhere in the world could be at risk for rabies in unvaccinated travelers, even in the United States. So when do we give vaccination for travelers? If someone traveled to rabies risk countries, especially children and those with occupational risks, 
such as veterinarians, cavers, and lab workers. Non-vaccine prevention is extremely important. Stay away from all dogs, including puppies, in the endemic area. Stay away from all animals if possible. Don't provoke any animals. Don't touch, don't feed monkeys. Use protective measures to avoid bat exposure if you are planning to visit bat-infested caves. We need to be vigilant with children because they are at risk for exposure and they may not report bite, scratches or lick or other incidents. You don't know if they're exposed. Don't bring animals to your home as a pet because dogs and cats may be infected with rabies but symptoms will only show up several days or months later. We can provide rabies vaccine as pre-exposure prophylaxis. The primary series is two doses series on day one and seven intramuscularly. We can boost one more time if needed. CDC come up with five risk categories based on their risk stratification. The highest risk group include for those who work with live or concentrated rabies virus in the lab. We provide two doses series, day zero and day seven, and check the title every six months. For risk category two, in this group, people who handle beds, who contact with beds somehow, or who go to the high-density bed environments like caves and do animal necropsies. They should be getting two doses series, day zero and seven, and check the title every two years and boost again as needed. Risk category three. This is the patient population. Pretty much all the traveling clinic will be seen. The, in this group, people may not deal, deal with the beds, but other members for more than three years. And they are probably going to be, meaning they are probably going to be, are continue to be at risk for more than three years. Those are usually veterinarian, veterinary technician, animal control officer, wildlife biologists, rehabilitators, trappers, and spill blankers who are cave explorers, or somebody who would go outside of the United States to rabies endemic countries. For those, we provide two doses series, day zero and day seven. Plus, we have an option to do one of the two things. One, we can recheck the title between one year and three years and boost again if needed or we just give the booster dose between three weeks and three years without checking their title. For the risk category four, same population and like in risk category three, but their risk is not more than three years after they receive the pre-exposure prophylaxis. Risk category five is for general U.S. population and we don't generally provide the vaccination. Post-exposure prophylaxis vaccine. If you get bit by potential rabbit animal, make sure you clean the wound with soap and water thoroughly. Then you go to the hospital or clinic in the local areas for vaccine and rabies immunoglobulin. If you received primary series two doses or plus or minus booster dose, you may not need rabies immunoglobulin, but you do need two doses of vaccine again on day zero and three. This picture was taken at the end of last year in Borg, Gaia, India. 
Now we are moving to Brevna 20. Brevna 20 cover 20 stereotypes, including 6A, because 6A has cross immunity against 6C. FDA has licensed several Brevna pneumococcal vaccines. Seven in 2000, Brevna 13 in 2010, and Brevna 20 in September 2022. So we are getting better and better and more and more coverage. This data was published in 2019 in MNWR. This showed that the importance and the power of Brevna vaccine, regardless of the vaccine type, either 7 or 13, they save life and they save invasive pneumococcal disease in adult age above 65. With Brevna 20 new on the market, we have a bit of confusion. Basically, we have we come to have additional option with new Brevna 20. Regardless of if you had vaccine or not before age 65. Even if you have Pneumovax 20 before, even though you have Brevna 13 before, before at any age, even though you had Brevna 13 and Pneumovax 23 before age 65. If you give additional Brevna 20, that would be it. You don't have to remember other Brevna or 15 or 7 or Pneumovax vaccine. That should do it. And that simplify our guideline. Again, for adult age between 19 and 64 with specific immunocompromising condition, which is listed at the bottom of the slides, we come to have additional option with Brevna 22. Basically, this should replace, or this could replace previous complex recommendation, the option B. Also, adult age between 14 and 64 with a cochlear implant or CSF leak. This Brevna 20 come to an option and that simplify the previous guideline. Again, for age between 19 and 64 with chronic health condition, the health conditions are listed at the bottom of the slide. This become um, an option as an option A and that replace the complex guideline. However, in the resource limited setting, if Brevna 20 is not available, please follow the previous guidelines and that should be effective too. Before we go to the vaccine hesitancy, I intentionally leave the exit vaccine doses and also routine vaccine doses schedule because I consider them as open book or look up so you don't have to remember. So vaccine hesitancy is also a problem worldwide. I'm going to be starting with the questions. What strategy is most likely to succeed in convincing hesitant persons to get vaccines? A. Providing facts about vaccine safety or effectiveness. B. Confronting specific fears head on. C. Eliciting their perspective and encouraging actions that protect their health. D. Emailing accurate vaccine information to them. E. Asking them to overcome their fears. The answer is C. Eliciting their perspective and encouraging actions that protect their health. To improve vaccine rate is not easy. Sometimes providing scientific facts is helpful in convincing patients. However, sometimes these evidence can backfire you. 
patients can feel threatened or attacked, may actually become more resistant to vaccines. A better way to influence hesitant patients is motivational interviewing. We use this method in drug addicts to quit. Motivational interviewing. How do we do it? Ask open-ended questions. Elicit their perspective. What concerns do you have about the vaccine? Acknowledge their perspective and we need to build trust. I can see why you might be worried. Affirmed good intention and identify with them as caring. I'm glad you care about your health and safety. Ask permission to share your perspective before you talk about vaccines and your perspective in your scientific data. I have spent a lot of time looking into this. Can I share my thoughts? And with this, you can convince your patients and, and to get the vaccination and hopefully our vaccination rate will be going up. Thank you and I will take questions from here.